My dad wasn't armed or skilled very well in being a father. Neither was my mom. And you know what? Neither are we. We're flying by the seat of our pants trying to figure out what we're doing with kids. There's, there's, there's no manual. I mean, we get one with an appliance we buy, but there's no manual that seems to come home with our children. So as a young child growing up, being the oldest of eight, you know, there was something inside of me that was watching my parents raise me and use discipline, and I said, that's not right. This is not what we're supposed to do with our kids. There's something else we're supposed to do. Do you know how long I had to work to earn the money to buy that dress that you're wearing? And look how you got it dirty. Do you know how long I slaved in the kitchen to make that meal and you won't eat that food? What would your grandfather say if he was here to see you doing that? They talk for them. They do their homework for them. They give them money whenever they need it because they just want to make it all better. And what mom or dad wouldn't want to do that, right? We love our kids. We don't like seeing them in pain. We don't like seeing them struggle. So we like to use our power and our money to make things all better. What's wrong with time out? I understand the guilt and the magic wand. What's going on here? Well, let me tell you, time out is not working because it's not being used in the way in which it was designed. The other tool is yelling and screaming. Pick up those toys. Do you know how many times I have to tell you to get those clothes off the floor? Get in here and help me right now. And screaming and yelling and hollering and we tend to think that this is a discipline tool, especially the parents who say, we don't spank, but they do yell. Experts have warned us that yelling is far more damaging than spanking. Do you know why? Because yelling kills the human spirit inside of the child. It's the part of them that'll keep them happy, healthy, safe, and strong as an adult. You don't want to destroy that now. It's a tough world out there, and it's a tougher world out there than it was for us. That, that spirit to be an explorer and figure out how they can turn and flip that world upside down and make a change for the better. So the problem is, you know what happened to many of us? We too were explorers. We came out of our mom's womb. We arrived into the, into the world, but you know what? Our moms and dads weren't ready to let us be explorers. They kiboshed us. They squeezed out the little explorer in us because they wanted us to comply. It was easier that way. So you know what happened to a lot of us? We lost the spirit to be an explorer. I'm first gonna be a child who's after the goal of attention. See if you've seen a child this way. Go ahead, make me pick up my toy. Billy, come in here and pick up your toy. This toy, Mom? Yes, that toy. Come um, in here and pick up that toy. Wait, first, look what I learned how to do. Watch. No, no, Whoa! No, no. Did you see me, Mom? No. I just balanced Billy, that one foot. Wasn't pick up that, that toy, please. Mom, you're not looking. Billy. Mom, you didn't see me. Billy, please pick up that toy. Wait, no, watch. No, Billy, Spider no, doing push-ups on the mirror, Mom. Pick up the toy, look, Billy. Isn't that cool, Mom? Billy. <gasps> no, Billy. Wait. I said pick up the toy. Guess what, Mom? Guess what this is? It's the other half of this. Isn't that cool? Really? I said to Mom, pick up so the Mom, that's so cool, toy. isn't it? Just pick up the toy. But now I'm going to go after the power or the goal of power. And that's the next one on your handout. Notice the changes and the difference in my behavior that were, are completely different than attention. Go ahead. Billy, come in here and pick up your toy. This bear? Yes, that bear. Why should I? Because I said so, pick up the bear. But Mom, it's not fair. I always have to pick up my bear. Billy, please just pick up the bear. Mom, You no. need to pick up your I toys. I just picked it up yesterday. Billy, I said just pick up the toy. I, Mom, I'll do it in five minutes. No, Billy, I said please just pick up the toy no, now. No, I'll do it in five no, minutes. No, I said I pick it up I want to go out and play with the kids. You no. can't make me do it. Yes, I can. Pick I'm going up out the to bear. play with the kids no, right No, you now. are not, young man. Get back here. <laughs> One more time, now I'm going to be a child who's after the goal of revenge. Notice the difference now. Go ahead. Billy, come in here and pick up your toy. This toy? Yes, that toy. Well, why should I? Because I said so. What do you do around here? 
Excuse me, young man. I said just, just pick up the toy. You don't do anything around here. You're a messy just mom. Just pick up the toy. You're a messy mom. You keep everything all I over the place. I said pick up the toy now. You don't now. do the dishes. The kitchen's a mess. I don't even like pick having you as my mom. Billy. You're an awful mom. Okay, Amy. Uh, Amy. I want you to say to me, don't you talk to me that way. Go ahead. Don't you talk to me that way, young I man. I just did. So one more time, this is the last time, I'm going to be an in inadequate ch child. <clears throat> Go ahead and, and um, make me pick up the toy. Billy, come in here and pick up your toy. I can't do it. Billy, please pick up the toy. It's too hard. Well, well, well do you need me to help you? Do you want me to pick it up for you? that they came out of the room with an invisible helmet with the flashlight on the, on the front, you know, a little miner's helmet. Their job is to explore and discover their world. That's how they learn. The object is to give them opportunities to explore appropriately. You know, you want to preserve that little explorer in your child because you know what? They're going to need it when they're an adult. came to me and said, I wonder if you can help me. My two little boys are jumping on the sofa. I've tried spanking them. I've tried taking the privileges away. I've tried taking their toys away. I've tried sending them to bed. Nothing works. What do I do? And I said, you know what? Your little boys need to jump. So the object is you've got to figure out how they can jump, but just not do it on the sofa. So I said, here's a suggestion for you. I want you to go find some sort of pillows or cushions or something decorate them, let them help you, and then put them in a playroom so they can jump. And then what you'll tell your boys is, boys, from now on, I can't let you jump on the sofa. But you can jump in here and get all excited about it. See, what you want your children to stop doing, you have to act like it's no big deal. And what you do want them to do, you have to act all excited about it. It's called, it's what I call emotional polarity. Your children will go towards you and what you want them to do emotionally. So this mom was cool. She put the word out to all the family and found a relative who was throwing out a sofa. She took the three cushions off the sofa. She had this decorating project with the boys. I think they're like four and six and they made big targets on them. One of them she labeled jumping. Then they brought them ceremoniously into the playroom and said, this is your jumping sofas. And they were jumping like crazy and she's jumping with them. They had a blast, flipping over, falling. And then she went back into the kitchen. Two hours later, she comes out there back on the sofa, jumping. And she was ready for what I told her next. I said, all you do without any emotion, you walk in, you just lovingly, not angrily, lovingly guide them off the sofa and say, this is where you can jump. Guide them into the room. They start jumping on the cushions. Over the next week, they showed up on the sofa five more times, just to test her. See, they wanna know who's flying the plane. They wanna know who's in charge here. After those five incidents of her not uh, remaining calm and lovingly guiding them to the jumping cushions, the jumping on the sofa stopped. When you get on an aircraft and you're getting ready to take off, the flight attendant gives us the briefing. And what do they usually say? Yes. Put it on yourself first, then put it on your child. That's an analogy to taking care of yourself. How do you expect to be a halfway decent parent if you're doing a lousy job of taking care of you? They want to know who's flying the plane. They're going to test you. They're going to break your boundaries. They're going to explore. And the object is you've got to do it in an environment that keeps them safe and that also gets cooperation. raised with internal motivation become successful as adults.